Turn back in Acts 8. Remember, they, in verse 5, they got scattered because of persecution. They went around preaching the gospel. Philip was going out and healing the sick. He preached, the, he preached Christ. He preached the gospel. He went into a city. He preached the kingdom of God, the gospel, and he healed the sick therein. You see that? He healed the sick. He cast out devils. He freely received. He freely gave. Okay? Look what we have here. I want you to see this. Verse 12, it says, They believed Philip's preaching. They believed the things concerning the kingdom of God. See? He obeyed what... He was a new believer. He wasn't one of the original gospel. This new believer obeyed what the disciples taught him about what Jesus taught them. Okay? Look what he did. I want you to see that he obeyed what Jesus said. Look at this very closely. He preached the things concerning the God. He went into a city. He preached the kingdom of God. He preached Christ. Okay? People believed. All right? In the name of the Jesus Christ and were baptized in water, both men and women. So they believed and were baptized like Peter told them. Y'all repent ye, be repent every one of you, be converted, be baptized every one of you in water, and you will receive the gift of the Spirit. Y'all follow me? Okay. Then Simon himself, look at this. There was a, a guy there that was a sorcerer, and he tricked a lot of people with familiar spirits. I want you to see this, guys. We can go back and read it, but I'm not. we're going to have to go back and read um, Acts 8 yourself. There was a guy named Simon right there. Verse 13, Simon himself believed. Okay? Simon was a sorcerer that used... I want you, to, I want you guys to see this. The other day I played a video about hypnotism, about, you know, there's things in the world, hypnotists, that hypnotize people, right? And there's people in the church that lay hands on people and people fall out. And it looks a lot like what's in the world. Well, actually, the what's in the world looks a lot what's in the church, both sides. You guys have to see this, okay? What's in the Bible is true, Okay? Everything God does, Satan has been copying and imitating since the beginning of time. We can go down all through the Bible. There's a thing called a familiar spirit. Satan has demons in the church and in the world imitating everything as a false gospel and false manifestations. Right now, you can go right now to a Kundalini meditation seminar. Right now, you can get it booked. You can go online and register right now to go to a Kundalini place where someone will lay their hands on you, and you will twist and slither and do all kinds of you know, dances just like you see in Bethel. You can go right now and get that experience that's an illegal experience not the Spirit of God, but a demonic spirit can imitate what God does. You can go in there, and these people get orgasms and all kinds of crazy stuff, and they open themselves up to the demonic world. Okay? I'm just telling you truth. Kundalini, you can go right now and get a imitated experience with supernatural. Okay? It's a familiar spirit. Now, you can go to church right now in different extremes, and get the same experience you get in a kundalini seminar you can get the same the same experience in certain churches they can touch you and you can flip and flop and the whole there's some churches that right now they have rooms where you can go in these rooms and have an intimate kundalini i guess experience with jesus and people will go in there I'm just telling you truth, guys. I'm not going to call out names right now, but I'm telling you, there are people where they have intimate rooms where you can go be intimate with Jesus, and people will have orgasms with Jesus. Why am I saying this? It's because this stuff needs to get exposed. This stuff is, it is I'm fed up with it. Innocent Christians, naive Christians go in there and think that this is the way it's supposed to be. I want you to know, guys, very clearly, that even in the New Testament time, the new believers had to deal with Satan then, with demonic spirits imitating. 
Satan was, I can go through the book of Acts and show you, Satan was trying to convince people that, for example, look at Moses. Moses, he brought a staff that God gave him. He put the staff, it turned into a snake. Remember that? Remember the sorcerers that were there with Egypt? They imitated what Moses did by the power of God. Do you believe that God sent Moses? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God I am that I am, Jehovah Yahweh, was with Moses. And the power of God was imitated and copied by the magicians. Demonic, fallen angel, possessed men copied what God's power did. Y'all follow me? Now, you will see this now. Hit people, the hypnotist will take touch people on the head and they'll fall out. Just like you'll see in the church. The power of God touches people. And it's like they, in the church, the power of God, I've had it happen. I've, I've had it happen lots of times. I've touched people. I don't want people to fall down. I want people to receive. I want people to get healed and do what I tell them to do and walk. When they're in a wheelchair, I want them to get up out of the wheelchair and walk. Okay? I don't want them to fall out and faint. I don't want them, I want them to be coherent. Usually when people do that around me, it's a demon. And I cast a demon out and they get up. And then I pray for them and they don't fall out. But sometimes when they, for some reason, they'll touch me. But the life and the power of God in me, it's like they touched a power socket. It's like they touch a power line outside and got electrocuted. Right? They're like, they shake. I've seen people by the power of God get, I listen, we would lay hands and they'd go flying back six feet and flop on the ground like they just got electrocuted. I have seen it. Now, I've also seen that I've seen Satan imitate that out there with power because guys, witchcraft is real. There's two kingdoms. There's Satan's kingdom and there's God's kingdom. I know witches that had bullets shot at them and the the bullets fell to the ground. That people shot a gun at them and the bullets just like the matrix fell down in front of them because of demonic spirits. And I can tell you right now, some of them people got saved and wrote books about it because the more demons that they had in them, the more power they could walk in. And they have context, a contest, all right? Now, you go to San Francisco or around LA, I mean, you know, and they have big mansions where all the witches and the brotherhood get together and they have contests and they demonstrate the power that they walk in, supernatural power. I'm telling you guys, there are two kingdoms out there. Satan's job is to imitate and to make you fall for something that is close to the truth. Okay. I hope that is uh, I hope that is very clear. I don't want anyone out there to mistake a video that I played the other day from somebody that's in error who made a video saying that the hypnotist that the that a lot of the spirit filled spirit filled evangelists or preachers out there are all acting like hypnotists okay that is not accurate in saying that okay okay i've had actually when i was younger i went to a few benny hen crusades when i was a teenager benny hen called me up on stage and laid hands on me and my brother he prophesied that we would touch the world he prophesied to benny hen did yep and i saw his mom pray and when his mom prayed in Hebrew, I saw half the stadium fall out in the spirit. I, I saw great displays of power. Now, I don't agree with some things, a lot of things, especially what Ben Hinn teaches, how he teaches it. And I don't display, I don't, we'll, we'll, we'll get into that some other time. I don't agree. J.C. Bloom, IHOP is what I was talking about. International, International House of Prayer. They are one of the very... I'm not going to get all in this right now because I've got some things I need to teach. But IHOP, they have some things over there with intimacy and things they've done. And different people, I'm just telling you, there's some NAR, that is NAR and error. I don't believe in their doctrine at all. It's error. Okay? There are things that they believe that are right. There's a lot of good things they believe, solid doctrine. Okay? It's just how they actually preach it and teach it and display it and how they tell people that that doc, it's that's where there's error. And we'll get that some other time. Okay, guys? All right, here we go. Look what Philip did. Simon, the sorcerer who used a familiar spirit to do miracles. You see that? He did miracles. He did miracles, guys, using a familiar spirit. This guy, Simon, verse 13, in Acts chapter 8, he used a demonic spirit to do miracles. Right now, there's witch doctors all over the world 
<laughs> they're at every hospital. <laughs> but I'm talking about in Africa, whatever, witch doctors, South America and stuff, witch doctors that actually can heal sick. All right? They can do that. Kingdom of darkness can do that. Okay. This, Simon himself believed also when he was baptized, he got baptized in water, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Look at verse 14. Verse 14. Now when the apostles, which are at Jerusalem, now the apostles who taught Philip heard that Philip wasn't getting the results like he should because he's still young in the faith. Okay? Philip was still young. He was still a new believer, and that's okay. He had support from the apostles who were discipling him, okay? They heard at Jerusalem that Samaria had received the word of God. They sent unto them Peter and John, who were discipling Philip, who when they were come down, they prayed that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he, the Holy Spirit, was fallen upon none of them yet. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Look at this. These people got saved and healed, and they got demons cast out, and they got baptized in water. So the disciples, who were more mature, said, Oh, look at Philip. Way to go, Philip. You're preaching the gospel, get people baptized, but you haven't led them into being filled with the Holy Ghost yet. So we're going to come down there, and we're going to help you, okay? If they get down there, verse 15, they prayed for the people that got saved to receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were only baptized in the name of Jesus. Verse 17, they laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. All right, they did receive the Spirit when they believed, because the Holy Spirit draws all men, and the Holy Spirit comes inside and makes you a born-again creature, and they got baptized in water, but they got filled with the Holy Ghost when Peter and John came down to lay hands on them. Verse 18, and when Simon saw, that through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given. Whoa! This sorcerer was still thinking in his merchandising ways. He wanted a way to make money. My God, Simon, I think Simon must have come back these days because everybody now feels they can make money by laying hands in miracles and they can lay hands and people get filled with the Holy Ghost. Simon wanted to do the same thing. Look, he offered them money. He offered Peter and John money saying, hey, Give me also this power that on whomsoever I lay my hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. You see that? He thought he could buy it. And you know what? He thought that he didn't have the power. Matter of fact, he had the power already to do it. <laughs> but he was offering money for God to give him a power which he already had. Okay? And then Peter rebuked him and said, hey, you and your money can go to hell. That's what Peter said to him. Both of you you and your money can go to hell if you think you can buy this gift. He says, you need to repent because you're in gall. You are right now. He says, you are, you are basically, you have to read it yourself, okay? He said, you're in sin. You and your money can go to hell. I perceive that you're in sin. So repent. And maybe God will forgive you for that, for trying to bribe the power of God. I want you to see this, though, that Simon... They laid their hands on them and they received. Now, how did Simon know that these people received the Spirit? Okay? It's because they were speaking in tongues. Now, and this is the one passage where it doesn't say that they're speaking in tongues, but I'm going to go and show you the other ones. But how did he know the Spirit of God came on them? Because the same thing that Peter and John received when they did it, they prayed for them for them to receive it. And they would have done it the same way they received it because that's what they were commanded to do. Now, okay, here's five things, guys. Five things in being saved we see all throughout the book of Acts. We see miracles and healings typically in every passage. We see them believing and repenting. We see baptism in water. And number four, we see people getting filled with the Holy Spirit. And then we see them immediately going into being discipled, to being taught everything that the Lord has discipled, the people discipled them. Okay? So, five things. You see that in Philip, a new believer, they, they believed, they were baptized in water, and then they got filled with the Holy Ghost. But you go back and look a little thoroughly, they got healed and delivered from demons. Then they believed, then they got baptized in water, then they got filled with the Holy Ghost. 
And then they went on to being disciples because Philip stayed there a little while with them. And let's continue reading. I want you to see, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you a video here real quick. I'm going to, I'm going to get off this. I'm going to share it with you in a second. This is a guy that, um, I saw him laying down a drunk, poor man. He was the, a poor man in our city. He was laying on the side of the street. He had a cast on this man. I end up uh, laying hands on his leg. He got healed. And then after he got healed, we took him inside and we gave him clothes. We gave him shoes. We gave him food. And then we led him to Jesus. He gave his life to Jesus. He repented. And then I took him out in the water and he got baptized. Okay. You see what I'm saying? I want you to know you and I are to follow the book of Acts example. Okay. I took this guy out to the water, baptized him. All right. When he came out, I was casting demons out of him. Okay, so I saw him and he got healed. Then he believed. All right, just being he just believed and and you know got born again and gave his life to Jesus, said a prayer basically. And then I said he got his family out there in front of his family, in front of all of our church. He got baptized in water, repenting and saying that Jesus is his Lord. And he made a public statement. He believed in his heart. And he confessed with his mouth that Jesus was Lord. Okay? When he came out of that water, I cast them demons out of him. All right? He got, he got filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues. You see that? Just like we see in the Bible. This is Laura's mom. Laura's mom and dad in 2020... Either they renewed and they, they understood the full gospel and they got saved, fully saved. This is a family member. I'm sharing this because people last night, people last night were talking about their family members that want to get saved. This is how it happens. Her family member got saved. All right. She repented and understood the gospel and gave her life to Jesus. We went to pray for her to get filled with the Holy Ghost, and nothing happened. She couldn't get filled. So we we, could, we, we saw her a demon was manifesting. So we spent the next 30 minutes casting demons out of Laura's mom. Once we got all the demons out of her, she started speaking in tongues. All right? Now, just going into this right here about we're going to go in and keep going on. I'll show you real quick. I'm going to go in here and just, I'm going to, for the sake of people not believing and not just for the sake of everyone out there, I am going to show you. I'm going to play a, one of these videos just for the sake of. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen. I'm just going to. I'm going to walk you through one of these instances because it is for today, guys. This is for today. It's for you. This is for you. This is for everyone the Lord our God calls. The promise of the Father is for you to be baptized with the Spirit, to be filled with the Holy Ghost, to receive power, to be clothed with the same power that's in Jesus. I'm going to show you this video. Now, I was not going out looking. I was actually working in the office. I had work clothes on, as you can see. And I was, we were working nonstop every day on the office. I had drywall on me. I, I mean, I was doing drywalling and painting and all kinds of stuff. And I had a shirt on me that was too small and it was very tight. <laughs> so excuse me. I typically wouldn't wear that shirt, but I was, I then sweat through all my other clothes because I'm working so much. And this is the only shirt I had that was clean. And it was definitely tighter on me these days, okay? That was before a 40-day fast. But anyways, um, I go and pray for him. I'm going to play this and fast forward a little bit and get you to the point. This is me talking to him, all right? He's telling me that, and I, I don't want to play the whole, it's 21 minutes, okay? I get to the point. Let me see what I'm saying here. 
Let me make sure I get this. Okay. All right. This pain and whatever to go, I'm gonna want you to do what I tell you to do. Like get up, try to step on it, and you be honest with me and tell me about the pain. It hurts. We are going. That's, I want you to just act. I want you to tell me, and I'm gonna deal with. All right, guys. One thing I want you to see. I want you to hear my dear sister Lori Apple. So what do we do? We disciple. I took Lori Apple where she was working at the office. I said, Lori, now we had to go out and get something out of the truck. She wanted me to carry something heavy. So I walked out and I said, Lori, you see that person over there laying down? What, is he dead? And I said, Lori, come with me, girl. So she walked with me and I talked to the man and he had a brace. I said, Lori, come here. I'm about to show you how to heal the sick. So Lori comes with me and I want you to hear what she says because the, uh, it's really awesome to see how Lori, it's her first time ever seeing someone get healed. So she'll say things out of being nervous. It's, it's, it's awesome. I love when a new person gets out and gets trained to show how to do this. Ever since that, Lori's been wanting to do it. Now Lori is part of our Tuesday night um, divine healing technician training. She's part of our study group. Now she is going to go, she's going out with us more and she's going to be healing the sick. But when she makes comments, you can, you can see this is what a new believer is supposed to do. Get out with someone and be shown what to do. Yes, until it is fully and fully healed. You understand? So right now, I'm serious. Jesus can heal. I know it. Now, you want to walk on this again, right? You want to have it all pain-free, right? Anything else in your body you want to be holy so you can do more for God, right? You can help more people. All right, so let me pray here real quick. Now, this is Lori. My name is Brock. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Johnny. All right, I'm going to put my foot on your foot, my hand on your foot. I'm going to hold your hand. Father, I thank you for this opportunity right now. Jesus. For this man right now. In the name of Jesus, Jesus. I command the spirit of infirmity right now to go from him right now. In the name of Jesus, I command this foot to be whole. Be healed now in the name of Jesus. Power of God, go through this foot right now. In Jesus' name, every bone and ligament, tendon, everything right now, you work. You be whole and you be healed. I command all pain. You go right now in Jesus' name. Ankle, you work right now in the name of Jesus. I command this body to be whole. I command this body right now to get up and walk. I command everything to, to work right with no pain now in Jesus' name. All right, buddy, let's get up. Put your hands. There we go. There we go. Watch out, buddy. Yeah, please stop. I'm reading right there. Don't fake it. Now, you be honest with me and you walk on that and you tell me how you feel. Now, you tell me from one to ten where your pain is, all right? Walk this way. Tell me how it feels. Hey, hey, right now you do. Hey, you just keep stay, stay focused. Jesus is healing you. Now you walk this way back. The first question he had was, "What church do you go to?" Whoa. I'm like, "Don't, hey, stay focused. Keep walking." Here, buddy, and remember, like I asked, one to ten, you tell me how you feel. Be honest. Hundred percent true. Yes, sir. He said, how'd you do that? <laughs> oh, that's awesome. It's Jesus. It's not us. You know Jesus, what he did, right? He went about healing everybody he saw that was hurting, right? That's all Jesus did was went around healing people. He said, hey, heaven is within your reach. The kingdom of heaven is here. And he said, here, take it. He gave heaven out. God who dwells in heaven, lives inside of us. Now, tell me honestly, from one to ten, I mean, zero, it means no pain. Ten means excruciating pain. Talk to me. Where is that? 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 Where is that?
You said it was way above a 10? Before, before what happened? Before? Mm -hmm. before Jesus. Before <laughs> Jesus, that's right. What about now? I think I walked with Chattanooga back. <laughs> Chattanooga? Oh, <laughs> praise the Lord. Hey, praise the Lord. Lord. You got a second shoe with you? All right, let me show you. He took his boot off. He took his boot off and showed us what had happened. All right. So we go and we pray for his foot again. All right. Then he gets up and he starts walking around barefoot. You see? He goes barefoot. And he comes over. I prayed and his foot started to move again. And then we get into the office. And now I'm sitting there with Rocky. Rocky's licking on him and showing him love, and we're giving him food and shoes, and he gives his life to Jesus. See? He gives his life to Jesus, and there you go. Now, let me get out of this, and I'll show you. I'm going to show you one more thing here, guys. So this is us baptizing him. We get out in the water. We go. He confesses his sin and everything. And he gets he gets baptized. And then right here, demons start coming out. Now, I don't want to show all that right now. We ain't got much time, but the guy gets free, and then he's all excited, okay? He stands up, and then he's all, I talk to him a little bit, and then we come out of the water, and he's like a new man. The guy was glowing. It was amazing, okay? Now, for the sake of everything, I'm not going to get into, you know, all that. We're going to get back to, back to the teaching. Okay, so here we go. Now, I am intentionally doing this teaching so that it's long, right? So that we can have it all in one place for people out there. You can stop, pause, everything. I just wanted you to see that the Bible gives us in the book of Acts the examples of how people got saved baptized in water, filled the Holy Ghost, and healed and delivered. Because you've never experienced it does not mean it does not say what it says, guys. You have to seek God to get your experiences to line up with the Word. You have to line up the Word. The Word doesn't change to line up with you. Okay? I show you that because I am living, I am proof that the Word is works that what they did then we do now we get people healed they believe they get baptized in water we get them you know fill the spirit we cast out demons whatever it is just like they did in the new testament it is still for you and still today sometimes you just have to get awakened and someone has to show you how to do it that's all it is guys look at this acts chapter 9 now we're going to look at paul this is the Apostle Paul's conversion, okay? Chapter 9, verse 3. And as Paul journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shone around about him a light from heaven. That was supernatural. That was Jesus. Ooh. Jesus had a visitation, if you want to say, from Jesus. I mean, Paul had a visitation from Jesus. Paul fell to the earth, heard a voice saying unto him, See, he fell down. See? He fell down. He saw Jesus fell down. So there you go. There's an example of people falling down in the presence of God. Okay, he fell down. He, the Bible says he trembled. He was shaking. So if you want to know what the Bible says about people falling down, it is there in ways. I can go through that, but they fell down when they saw the angel. Remember? They fell down like they were dead, like they were asleep. You go down, they fell down. When Jesus said, I'm he, when they came in the garden to arrest him, I'm he. Every one of them, soldiers and all, fell down. Okay? John fell down when he saw Jesus as someone who was dead. Okay? People fell down to Jesus and worshipped him. All right? He fell down when he saw the light from heaven. He fell to the earth and he trembled. All right. 
Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for you to kick against the pricks. In other words, I'm an ain't a, a donkey or a whatever, a horse can be kicking against and you're bucking, you know, like when you go a rodeo and they kick in the air and they kick their legs up and they're trying to hang on to the cow. That's what Jesus is saying. You're like a rodeo. You're kicking against the pricks and you're fighting against what I'm trying to get you to do. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what do you want me to do? This is when Saul got saved. This is when he changed, his name got changed to Paul took on a surname the old man died the new man was of god and all things were new okay he jesus said arise go into the city and it will be told you what you must do this is how paul the apostle paul when he was he wasn't even an apostle right now he was just a believer he believed right here and when the men journeyed with him, stood speechless. They heard the voice, but they didn't see a man talking to him. All right, verse 8, And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. He was blind for three days. So he had to have men lead him by the hand into this city. Okay, Acts chapter 9. 